In this video, we will review the five basic tests that can be used as a quick first pass in diagnosing anemia. All of these tests start by taking a sample of venous blood from your patient and transferring it into a purple top tube. If you could look at this whole blood up close, you would see that aside from an occasional white cell and a spray of tiny platelets, it is essentially a suspension of red cells in plasma. In evaluating anemia, the main focus is obviously on tests that examine the red cells. The first test looks at what percent of the blood is taken up by the red cells. In this test, the intact red cells are separated from the plasma, for example, by centrifuging and packing them at the bottom of a capillary tube. By comparing the total volume of the whole sample with the volume taken up by just the packed down red cells, you can determine the percent of blood that is made up of red cells. This number is normally around 40% and is referred to as the hematocrit. The second test asks how much hemoglobin, the main functional protein of red cells, is present in the blood sample. First you need to lyse the red cells, then measure the hemoglobin concentration. This test is called the hemoglobin, and the normal values are typically around 14 grams per deciliter. The hematocrit and hemoglobin are very tightly correlated. For all practical purposes, if one is up, down, or normal, the other is up, down, or normal. In anemic patients, both hematocrit and hemoglobin are low. As a clinician, you will usually be given both values. The next test is not a test for anemia, but gives you information on the quality of the red cells and is a useful diagnostic tool for sorting out why your anemic patient is anemic. This test examines the size of the red cells. In the instrument, the intact red cells are sorted from small to big and counted up to make a bell-shaped curve that represents the volume distribution. The mean cell volume, which is normally around 85 femtoliters, is calculated and reported to you. The abbreviation MCV is commonly used. This number is very helpful in sorting out anemias. When your anemic patient has a low MCV, the anemia is classified as microcytic. When it is normal, it is normocytic. And when it is high, the anemia is called macrocytic. In another video, we will cover the sorts of anemia that fall into these categories. In the next test, we look to see how well the bone marrow is responding to the anemia by determining how well it is doing in pumping out new young red cells. In this test, a dye is used to identify young red cells ones that still have a lot of mRNA in them. The percent of these young red cells is reported as the reticulocyte count. If your anemic patient has a low reticulocyte count, it may mean that the cause of the anemia is decreased production of red cells by the marrow. If your anemic patient has a high reticulocyte count, it probably means the red cells are being produced okay, but are being destroyed prematurely. In another video, we will cover the sorts of anemia that fall into these categories. After you have determined if your patient is anemic based on their hematocrit or hemoglobin, classified the anemia based on the mean cell volume, the MCV, and further classified it based on the reticulocyte count, you will have narrowed down your differential diagnosis considerably. The next step is to look at the blood in the microscope. Many anemias have characteristic findings on peripheral smear. For example, the red cell morphology may look normal, hypochromic, spherocytic, or have sickle forms. Your five key lab tests, patient history, family history, and physical exam findings are all you need to narrow down the differential diagnosis for your patient's anemia and guide you to your next diagnostic and or therapeutic steps.